Yellowstone supervolcano, abnormal changes have been found from a USGS seven-year study. The scientists at Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, alongside the help of European Space Agency, ESA, found that this supervolcano, the caldera, had fluctuated in height by up to 120 millimeters on Earth report reveals. The seven-year study, kicked off in 1997, led by Charles Wicks and used satellite pictures snapped by the ERS-2 probe, and their results showed an upwelling, that is, an inflation of magma under the northern edge of the caldera near the Norris Kaiser Basin, causing subsidence across the park. It means the caldera rim can rise while the floor sinks very closely to each other in time. And as we saw with the uh, previous Yellowstone videos I, I posted yesterday, the GPS near the northwest area of the caldera and northwest Wyoming and uh, over Hebgen Lake shows that there's a tremendous amount of inflation going on. Now the surface appears to be in constant motion, rising and falling, but Dr. Wick said that the team needed more time to understand what is happening. He said in 2007, we need 10 to 20 years of research before we can get a feel for the normal behavior of the supervolcano. And then we can predict what's happening based on the abnormal behavior, he says. He says we propose that the observed patterns of uplift, uplift and subsidence result from the nearly continuous movement of molten basalt into and out of the Yellowstone volcanic system. Wick said we need 10 to 20 years before we can feel the, uh, get a feel for the normal behavior. He and his colleagues believe that magma is rising from beneath the Sour Creek Dome in the caldera's eastern section where it hits the solid mantle rare layer and spreads out. And as magma pulses into the chamber under the dome, the dome swells and rises. It inflates, that is. Then when the magma pulse leaks out through fractures under the north rim of the caldera, the dome settles back. He says as the magma loses heat and cools, it drives back under the mammoth hot springs. And this is a USGS image of one of the hydrothermal areas of the Norris Geyser Basin. Yellowstone has over 10,000 hydrothermal areas and over 60% of the world's geysers. Finally, support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box. Dr. Wick says, right now we're looking at a new episode of Uplift that started in 2004. He has yet to provide an update on the situation, but the discovery does not mean the supervolcano is any closer to erupting, despite claims it's overdue. Researchers working for the USGS stated this theory could not be further from the truth. Their website reads, first of all, one cannot present recurrent intervals based only on two values, it would be statistically meaningless. But for those who insist, let's do the math, they say, the three eruptions occurred 2.1 million years ago, 1.3 million years ago, and 640,000 years ago. The two intervals are thus 0.8 and 0.66 million years, averaging 2.73 million year interval. And again, the last eruption was 640,000 years ago, implying that we're still about 90,000 years away from the time when we might consider calling Yellowstone overdue for another caldera forming eruption. However, we cannot discount the possibility of another such eruption occurring sometime in the future, given Yellowstone's volcanic history and the continued presence of magma beneath the Yellowstone caldera. And let's remember that uh, the two, uh, two of the biggest uh, super eruptions on Earth happened from Yellowstone. This is by Callum Hoare on Express UK. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support.